Hi guys, we're on our last part of this series of the parables. And we are in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. So if you have your Bibles, let's go there. And um, there's an exciting parable here. Um, one that is maybe not with the rest of the par other parables, like the Sermon on the Mount and, and some of these. It's, it's one that is a standalone, and it comes after the chapter of Matthew 24, which are signs of the second coming. The signs of wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, pointing towards Jesus' second coming. And then he gives this in Matthew 25. So, are we there? Matthew 25, verse 1. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins. How many? Ten. Who took lamps, their lamps, and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were, were foolish. Now, we see here Jesus giving an example of, of ten ladies going to meet the bridegroom, coming to join the wedding party, and it sounds like it's at night. And they all have something. They all have something very important. They have lamps, right? We would call them flashlights today, right? We all, we all carry one on our cell phone, right? The cell phone flashlight app. It helps us out, see when we're trying to find our keys. But they didn't have that. They had their own version called a lamp, an oil lamp. They would have a, a, a vessel or a pot with a wick in it and had oil in it. They all had this. Remember, five were smart, five were foolish. They had their lamps. It says, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. No extra oil. They, they had what was in there and they figured this should be enough. And then there's this word in verse, 20, in verse 4, but. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They carried extra. Extra just in case the bridegroom tarried, the wedding party tarried and, and waited. And that's exactly what happened. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Have you ever been to a wedding and you're sitting there in the pew and you're waiting for it to start? And you look and, and five minutes passes, ten minutes passes, eleven minutes passes, and you keep looking, and pretty soon it's, it's, it's 45 minutes late. I've been to one of those. I believe my own wedding started late. But the people stayed, right? You, you stay for the wedding because you're there to celebrate. And so these, these, bright, these virgins here, these, these wise ones and foolish ones, waited. But while they were waiting... It says that in verse 5, But while the bridegroom delayed, they all slumbered and slept. They all slumbered and slept. Right? They all had lamps. They all had been invited to this wedding feast, to this party. And they all slept. So what is this talking about? Is this talking about the church today? Could it be? As we're waiting for Jesus to come, it's getting later and later and later. We look at the signs, the, the famines, the pestilences, the wars, the rumors of wars, all the things that are in Matthew chapter 24, and we're, we're looking at our clock and we're wondering, why hasn't Jesus come yet? And so some of us sleep. Just the wise ones or just the foolish ones? No, it says, says all of them, all ten of them, slept. They were all waiting and they were all sleeping. Sleeping isn't the issue because they all did it. The preparation is the issue, right? They needed to prepare with the extra oil. It says, verse 6, and at midnight a cry was heard, behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him, join that wedding party. And they wake up. They realize what's happening. And then all those, verse 7, 
virgins arose and, and trimmed their lamps. They all got ready. And the foolish ones, notice this, said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Is that the way it works? We can borrow from someone else when Jesus comes? But they answered, verse 9, the wise answered and saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Now let me ask you this. Can we buy our way into heaven? No. Can we get to heaven by our relatives or our friends? No. Is this the way relationship with Christ works? Is, is we buy our way or we borrow from someone else? No. We need this experience ourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went in with him into the wedding. And the door was shut. Afterward, verse 11, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not, do not know you. Did you guys catch that? They were invited. They had their lamps. They had even oil They were all ready to come to the wedding feast, but didn't have enough oil. They hadn't prepared. And so they answer and say, we we don't know who you are. Relationship is the key. You can have Bibles on your shelf in every room of your house. You can go to church every week. But if you don't know the Savior, if you don't know the Redeemer... This is what will be answered. Assuredly, I say to you, I don't know you. And so in verse 13, Jesus ends this parable. Watch therefore, for you do not know, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is, is coming. If someone tries to tell you, and it's going to be on this date or this time, I mean, if you watch YouTube or look on the news, there's people predicting the end of the world with the eclipse. It's not the day or the hour that's important. It's who is coming that's important. And the preparation that's important. So what is this oil? What is this oil that needs to be brought along with? Well, throughout Scripture, kings were anointed with oil. There was oil being anointed with, for healing. There was this this symbol of oil being this almost presence of the Holy Spirit. And I think we see evidence of this in the book of Zechariah chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, let's go there. Zechariah chapter 4. And Zechariah is given a vision, an illustration or a parable, if you would, of something interesting. So let's go there. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 1. Now the angel who talked with me, came back and wakened me as, as a man who was wakened out of sleep. He was startled, like those ten virgins were. And he said to me, What do you see? And so I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on the top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it one at the right of the bowl and the other at the left. All right, can you picture this? You've got two trees, and we find out later that there's a connection between the trees and the lampstand. There's two trees and, and pipes going to the bowl, and with the bowl there is lamps and pipes, seven lamps and pipes going to them. This is kind of a weird illustration. What is this? It says, what are these? Then the angel So I spoke to the angel who talked with me and said, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? No, I don't know what they are either. I said, No, my Lord. And he answered me, Notice this. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, 
not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. All right, so he's talking here. Hey, not by might, nor by power. I mean, this is what we depend upon, isn't it? Our own grit. But he says, no, not by these things, but by what? But my, by my, by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 7, are you? Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. He shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me before you. For for who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plump line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which scan to and fro throughout the whole world. Did you catch that? There's this kind of prophecy saying Zerubbabel is going to do these great things, even though it's small. Start small. Then I answered and said to him, what are these two olive trees, right? Remember on either side. At the right hand of the lampstand and at its left. I further answered and said to him, what are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of the two gold pipes from which the gold drains? Did you catch that? There's these two trees and from them drains oil, olive oil, into the bowls which feed the the lampstands which give light. It's like a never-ending supply. And they answered, no. Do you know what these are? No, my Lord. And he said, these two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. These, these two, in, in Revelation, we see the two witnesses, the, the Old and New Testament. The scriptures are what give us this endless supply of oil, of connection connection to the Holy Spirit. An endless supply of the Holy Spirit comes from the trees to our lampstands, and then we then are lit and shine for Jesus. If you remember, I think some weeks ago, we talked about the, the widow that had to pay a debt. She, her two sons are going to be sold off as slaves, and, and Elisha says, Go fill up all the jars you have with oil. And so she goes and gathers them all up and and keeps filling and filling and filling and filling. And pretty soon all of the jars were full. And it didn't run out until the last one was full. This is the promise of the Holy Spirit to us. In Zechariah, we see these trees giving this endless supply of oil To his people. What if these foolish virgins in the parable had connection to this endless supply of oil? Would they not have brought it with? And so where does this oil come from? Where does the Holy Spirit come from and how do we get access to this endless supply? Well, I think let's go back to the beginning where it was given, at least in the New Testament. The Holy Spirit's been there all along, but there seems to be this special gifting of it in the book of Acts. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart Jerusalem from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Jesus tells his disciples to stay in Jerusalem because they're going to get something, the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to, to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But, this is what's important, but, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you 
and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus says, you know what, the kingdom of this world isn't worth anything. It's, it's not for you to know those times of, of when, who's going to become king or, or not, or who's going to be president, right? I mean, that's what we're dealing with now. It's not for you to know those things. But what it is, is giving you power to spread the gospel, and that power comes from the Holy Spirit. And so they waited. They waited for this Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. They were waiting. They were waiting for this Holy Spirit. When they were all with one accord in one place, where were they? Up in this room, praying together, waiting for this Holy Spirit to come upon them. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were there praying for this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They were praying for this connection to the tree to give them the oil of the Holy Spirit. So they had enough. And when they got that, what did they do with it? They kept it for themselves and said, oh, look what I have. No, they went out from that room with one accord. They went, went out from that room. And what did they do? It says they were, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, if you keep reading, they go start preaching in the marketplace to, to people of 14 different countries and 14 different languages. God gave them the gift to speak in other languages. And what were they speaking? Look what I have. No, they were speaking the gospel, the good news. Remember, Jesus said, you will, but when you will receive power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem first, and in all Judea and Samaria, outside of there, and to the ends of the earth. They took that message. They took that message and the experience that they had with Jesus. And the experience of the Holy Spirit coming upon them and, and teaching them, they took that message and shared it with people who didn't have that message. The people who were around them in the marketplace, or the, the people even visiting Jerusalem, and they say, listen, I've got this message. I've got, I know a Savior who died for you. You see, remember when, when the foolish virgins came to the wedding feast, they knock on the door, and he says, I don't know you. It's about this relationship. There's another passage I want to look at in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. It's two verses here that I want to look at. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, it says, In him, the him is capitalized there, this is Jesus, in him you also trusted. Do you trust Jesus? He's given us this promise of the Holy Spirit. He says that this one is going to come after him and, and be our comforter and our teacher and our guide to show us the way to go. We need him. We need to trust him. What happens when we don't? Well, we depend upon our own self. We figure, well, I've got enough oil in my lamp. There's, there's going to be enough time. I don't need to prepare. I'll do it tomorrow. And then it's too late. And so we have to trust this Holy Spirit that Jesus gives. Afterward, it says, in him you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth. Right? We heard that word, right? Of truth. We trusted, and then we heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, it says. We hear it from someone we trust, don't we? 
we hear this gospel message from someone we trust. We listen to them and they say, this is what I've found. Let me share it with you. And, and we listen to them and we hear this, this gospel message. We hear the word of truth, this gospel of salvation. In whom also, it says, having believed, right? Once we hear it, we hear this gospel of truth, of salvation, and then we believe it. It says, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of, of promise. When we accept Jesus as our Savior and follow him and trust him, he gives us this Holy Spirit of promise. It says, who, verse 14, is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. We're waiting for Jesus to come, right? We're waiting. It seems like it's, it's midnight. It's, it's, Jesus has waited too long. There's been wars and famines and pestilences and, and issues in politics. Why hasn't Jesus come yet? It's like he's waiting. It's like the bridegroom that's waiting, the wedding party that's waiting. And so what do we do in the meantime? Well, it says here, we have access to the Holy Spirit. We have access to the Holy Spirit right now. It says, who is the guarantee of our inheritance? Our inheritance of what? Of salvation, of the gospel, of, of eternal life with him, of, of knowing the bridegroom. G the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of, of that inheritance. We can have that relationship with him now. It says, until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. When is this redemption of his purchased possession? This is the second coming. This is what we are all waiting for. Jesus is waiting too. He's waiting to come and get us when the time is right. And so what do we do in the meantime? Well, we commune with the Holy Spirit. Connection with God, with Jesus and with the Father through the Holy Spirit. And because we have this, this promise of eternal life, it's not just something just for us. We, this is something we can share. Different than these, the wise virgins who, who couldn't share their oil, we have connection to the tree which gives the oil unlimited so we can share it or show them where we get it. This is good news. This good news of this parable of the, the ten virgins is something that needs to come to our heart. We may have slumbered and slept. We may have waited a long time, but don't lose heart. He said, I am coming. I'm preparing a house for you, many mansions for you in my house. And he's going to come back and take us to his home. Let's pray, God, as we wait for you. We may sleep, we may take naps, but I pray that we will have prepared with connection with the Holy Spirit this extra oil so when you come, we can say this is our God. We, wait, we have waited for him and he will save us. And I pray that we will take this message of the Holy Spirit being available to all, to, to everyone around us. In your name, amen. Hey guys, thanks for being with me this week. We've got some good things in store in the future, so come back again. Have a blessed week.